Good evening, guys. So we are going to talk about higher education in Canada today. Uh, but before I talk about that, before I talk about masters uh, in Canada, I would like to just brief you on our company's history. So we are go to university.com. So so it's an online education portal where you can find uh, universities listed. Um, and we and there are more than 2,000 universities listed on uh, go to university portal where you can compare the programs, where you can compare the universities, you can compare the costs, you can compare the programs, the intakes available, everything. And based on that comparison, you can find out or you can identify the best uh, set of universities based on your requirement, the uh, your aspirations, your interest, and everything. Uh, so, so as a company, we are uh, we are located. We are based in UAE, and we have more than. Uh, uh, in fact, we have seven branches all across UAE, which are based in the first. In fact, the first office we opened in Dubai, and then we uh, opened further branches in Sharjah and Abu Dhabi. Right, and we started our operations in 2011. Right now, uh, about me, so I have been working in the higher education industry for last eight years, and I have helped more than I would say 2,000 students to to reach to uh, to the uh, universities abroad, all across uh, USA, Canada, Australia, UK. Right. And I have, I have helped uh, students to, to pursue higher studies related to all the courses like engineering, liberal arts, business studies, uh, humanities, business, everything, right? So, uh, so, so let's uh, talk about master studies in Canada. So as you all know that higher education is the in thing right now. So every student want to go to uh, Canada or let's say other countries as well. Uh, so most important is like why you should pursue higher studies uh, abroad. There could be multiple reasons, but the most important reason is the exposure that you get when you go abroad for higher studies. You get exposure. You, you get to meet different types of people coming from different backgrounds. And then secondly, the kind of research, the kind of uh, the curriculum that the universities in uh, abroad you can find is unparalleled. Like the, the experience that you get from such courses, such universities actually makes you uh, quite knowledgeable, you, you will be in demand in the market, you know how to, how to, you know, how to present yourself to the companies uh, and, and position yourself as a strong candidate. So it's very important that, that, you, uh, that you go abroad and go to the right university. So now, as you must be knowing that Canada happens to be one of the most popular countries right now for higher studies. In fact, in the last year, more than 47,000 students uh, went to Canada from India for higher studies. That is just below USA. <clears throat> so what are the reasons for pursuing higher studies in Canada? Now, the reasons, again, it could be based on my personal choice. And, and there could be reasons which is quite uh, obvious, like one of them is uh, good education. So the quality of education in, is, in Canada is quite uh, consistent throughout the, throughout the provinces, throughout the university. So you won't find any bad university, so it, it might be either excellent or it might be good university. So that's one of the uh, main reasons that students, they, they choose Canada over other countries. The other reason is the safety. Unlike other countries where you do come across a lot of, a lot of uh, things which might make you a little uncomfortable 
to pursue your dreams in that country, Canada, you will not find any such incidents. Uh, people are nice over there. They're quite welcoming. Uh, I have placed so many students and none of the students have actually come back to me complaining about the environment in Canada. It's quite friendly. It's quite, uh, it's quite accepting, actually. <clears throat> so so uh, the environment is safe. Uh, racism is almost nil. And the third reason would be the uh, cost of education. Though the cost of education is uh, is quite high, but but uh, if you compare it with other countries like USA or Australia, it's still affordable. Like you can still uh, expect to pay a tuition fees of let's say fourteen thousand, fourteen lakhs or fifteen lakhs per year, and you can get a university, a decent university. Uh, but if you go to university like University of Toronto or University of Waterloo or British Columbia, then it could be a little on the higher side. So depending on the universities, uh, the cost of education could be could be anywhere between, uh, let's say, uh, 15 lakhs to 30 lakhs, uh, including, uh, uh, including your living expenses, uh, stay and everything, stay and food and all those things. So, so this is the third reason I would say affordability. The fourth reason would be uh, that you can work, uh, you can do part-time jobs while you are pursuing your higher studies. You, you do have the right to work for 20 hours every week. And for every hour that you put in, you will be paid close to 12 to 14 Canadian dollars, which actually is, is not a lot, but but at least you can meet your day-to-day -day expenses with that money. Uh, the other reason would be, uh, obviously, uh, permanent residency. So as you know that uh, Canada, it, it is offering uh, permanent residency to, to eligible uh, candidates. <clears throat> so, so as a student, you can, you can go to Canada, you can pursue your higher studies, and then once you have got the job, you can work there for a year and then you can apply for permanent residency. And in most uh, of the cases, students, they do qualify for the PR and then they can stay forever in Canada. The other reason is the stay back. It's quite simple, quite straightforward. If, uh, let's say if you're pursuing a four years bachelor's, then you, you get a three years of stay back. If you're pursuing a two years master's, you get a two years of Stay back. What is a stay back? Stay back is a period uh, which starts the moment you complete your education. So during that stay back, you can look for a job and then you can work in that country. You can work in Canada. So, so that, that's very important because you would like to gain some experience in that country. So even though, let's say, if you don't want to stay back in Canada forever, but you should work in Canada to, to show some value to, to, to the employers in the future. Let's say if you want to come back from come back to India uh, after you complete your studies, it's always nice to show some work experience in your in your resume. And that's why it's very important that you utilize that post study work visa. Uh, so that's very important. The other very important factor I would say uh, is the a uh, spouse visa. So let's say if you are married and you you want to take your spouse along with you to Canada, uh, then you you are allowed to do so, and your spouse can actually apply for the full time work as well in Canada. So let's say if you are studying there, you can continue studying there, and your spouse can work full time. So these are the factors which makes Canada as uh, very, uh, very uh, important destination and one of the best destinations, I would say, and very attractive as well. <clears throat> now, uh, let's let's talk about the higher education in Canada. So, uh, Canada is quite popular for all the courses, whether it is engineering. So, they have some really great universities for engineering, like University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, uh, then McGill University, McMaster, 
Ontario Institute of Technology. These are some of the great universities for engineering. Similarly, you can also find some really uh, top ranked universities for business courses like Rotman Common School, then Sauger Business School, uh, then there is uh, IB Business School, uh, Schulich Business School. These are again some of the uh, top business schools, and you can find these engineering colleges as well as business schools uh, in, in, in top 100 uh, rankings as well, whether it's uh, uh, Forbes ranking or FC ranking or QS ranking. So you can always find these universities in the top 100. Uh, so Canada is not only popular for engineering for business, it is also popular for humanities related courses, social sciences, uh, even for courses like psychology, uh, for, for law, uh, for architecture. So, so Canada can offer you a lot of options. A lot of options through uh, through university. Now the trending courses in Canada. So right now uh, the trending courses in Canada, I would say, would be in the field uh, of computers. Like data science is quite popular in Canada right now. Uh, similarly, uh, along with data science, you can also uh, find students going for business analytics. So there are a lot of companies offering lots of jobs in the fields of data science, um, business analytics, then a bit of programming related courses like artificial intelligence, robotics, automation. You can find uh, lots of options for such courses. Apart from these, the other courses popular in Canada, I would say would be business related courses like Canada offers uh, master uh, uh, courses in finance and business management in in marketing as well. And uh, then there are also courses related to financial engineering, which is quite popular right now. It, it Financial engineering, it involves a bit of engineering as well as finance. So anybody who is from an engineering background or who is from a computer science background and he wants to change his field into finance, he can go for financial engineering, which uses a bit of a bit of technology into finance, and and that's how you you uh, you can actually uh, you can actually include your engineering knowledge into the field of management into the field of finance. So even that's very popular in Canada. Uh, so coming back to the other questions, yeah, the most important would be uh, ideal profile for studying masters in Canada. <clears throat> so uh, I would like to be very honest with you uh, guys that there is no ideal profile actually. So the profile actually depends on what you want to study, what stage of your career are you right now, what's your career goal. Uh, how much you are ready to spend on your education and what tests have you taken and then what is the requirement of a specific university where you want to apply and based on all these factors comes the profile comes the ideal profile so let's say if i want to do master of science in computer science so let's say if i don't have gre uh, does that mean that I don't have an ideal profile because I don't have GRE? No, it does not because University of British Columbia, which is one of the best universities in Canada, does not require GRE. Like you can still apply for MS in Computer Science without GRE. But if I want to apply to McGill for Computer Science without GRE, then I cannot because McGill requires GRE. That's, that's a mandatory requirement. So, so what I'm trying to say is there is no ideal profile. It all depends on the university that you want to apply and the kind of money that you want to spend on your education, the location, everything matters. And then your profile comes in. So there are universities which would require some work experience. Otherwise, there would be universities which would not even ask for uh, any uh, work experience. So. 
So it's very important that before you apply to the university, you should check the requirement. And this process should start at least at least 15 months in advance. So let's say if I want to join 2021 August intake or September intake, I should start the process uh, in 2020 around uh, April, May. I should start the process this year itself for the next year application. So how do I start the process? I should first of all identify what do I want to study? What is my passion? What is my background? What I want to achieve from my education? So, so that's very important. So I start first of all identifying my passion, my interest. And then, then the second thing would be where I want to go. So let's say if I want to go to Canada, then in Canada, where do I want to study? Like there are 10 provinces in Canada. Would you like to go to all the provinces in Canada? Would, would you like to try all these provinces? Yes or no, that you have to answer. Like Ontario happens to be one of the uh, most popular uh, uh, province in in uh, uh, in Canada. After after Ontario, it could be British Columbia. Then there is uh, Quebec, which is very popular. But Quebec is mostly French dominated province. So you have to factor in all these things. So based on that, then you identify the province where you would like to study. So let's say I have identified uh, not one but two to three provinces. So one is Ontario, the other is British Columbia, the third is Alberta. Uh, then I then I find the universe. My third step, like in Ontario, I can I can uh, identify uh, university like University of Toronto, then University uh, of British Columbia. Uh, sorry, University of Waterloo. Then it could be Western University. It could be McMaster, Carton. Then in British Columbia, there are universities like University of British Columbia, Simon Fraser University. Then in Alberta, there is University of Alberta, which is quite popular, very good university. So then I identify the universities and then one by one, I should check the minimum requirements of these universities. I should also check the curriculum because it might happen that I want to do computer science and I'm mostly interested in artificial intelligence, right? Now, not all the MS in computer science might be offering artificial intelligence. Some universities might only have, uh, let's say robotics, data science, data mining, uh, neuro linguistic program, uh, all these things. Uh, but so it's very important that it's very important that you 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 go through the curriculum and accordingly you decide which course fits your requirement. And then I I should at least finalize seven universities. Five to seven is an ideal uh, ideal list of universities. So once I have done that, then I check the requirements and then I should make sure that. Uh, I meet all these requirements. So some universities, as I mentioned earlier, might ask for mandatory GRE. Uh, so there will be GRE requirement. Uh, there will you also would have to produce transcripts from your previous uh, university. You need to produce at least two letters of recommendation. So if you have worked, it's better to get one letter of recommendation from your uh, from the company that you have worked with and one letter of recommendation from the university where you pursued your bachelor's uh, from. Uh, the third very important requirement would be English proficiency requirement, which is which can be met through IELTS or TOEFL. So IELTS and TOEFL, uh, just to give you a brief idea about, it's an English proficiency exam, very basic. It consists of four sections reading writing listening and speaking uh, so the the marking scheme or the marking system is different in 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 both the test which is TOEFL and IELTS in TOEFL it is out of 120 and each section is out of uh, 30 so a good score i would say would be at least 23 on 30 and IELTS is on nine bands so each uh, section is on nine bands and you should achieve at least 6.5 overall and 6 in each. 
if you are applying to university like Toronto, Waterloo, UBC, McGill, then I would recommend at least seven uh, overall and 6.5 in each section. And TOEFL, as I said, minimum 23 in each section and overall should be at least 95 to 100. So this, this is very important and this is requirement. Uh, so you should not skip this. You should, uh, again, as I said, if you are starting your preparation fifth, uh, 15 to 16 months in advance, then you would have enough time to, uh, to prepare for these exams, whether, it's, whether it is GRE, whether it is IELTS or TOEFL, or you have to get transcripts from the university, you can, you, you might have to, uh, you, you might have to go to the university, talk to the administrator, get the recommendation, talk to your teachers to get the uh, uh, recommendation and transcripts, everything, right? So, so just uh, collect all these documents, prepare all, all these documents in advance. Then you would also have to write an essay, which is very important. Uh, uh, so it's very important that statement of purpose or statement of intent is very, is very, uh, I would say it should be very impressive. What is statement of intent or what is statement of purpose? As the name suggests, you have to write about the purpose for pursuing higher studies. Now, top universities get more than, let's say, 10 applications per seat. Okay. So you are actually not competing with yourself, but with the other applicants. So it's very important that you, you present the best application to the university and statement of purpose plays a major role in that. So you have to convince the university that you are the right candidate for, for them. And how do you do that? You talk about your passion. You talk about your long-term goal. You talk about your short-term goal. You, you talk about the reasons for choosing a particular university. You talk about the course curriculum. You should talk about how this university can help you to achieve your dreams, can, can help you to achieve your outcomes. So, so that's very important, you know, so you, you, uh, you should come across as a very passionate student so as somebody who wants to study in the, in the university only for the unit, only for the, uh, I would say the quality of the education, their lab, their research that they have, their professors that they have, you should talk about all these things, right? Uh, so this is what you require actually before you apply to the university and once you have all these things ready, you should start applying to the university. It's advisable to be ready with all these components of the application as well as, uh, as, well as I would say all the documents by the end of November. And try submitting your application by the first or maximum by second week of December to the top universities, to the top 10 universities in Canada, like Toronto, Waterloo, UBC, McMaster, Carlton, uh, Alberta, McGill, uh, Calgary. Uh, so these are the universities. The other universities like uh, University of Canada West, uh, Simon Fraser. So you can apply to these universities even in the month of January. In fact, uh, some uh, some universities they they keep accepting the applications by March by April also. But that doesn't mean that you will wait until the application deadline because masters courses uh, actually it operates on the first come first basis. So if you apply early, you have a better chance to. Uh, get in into the university. So so that's one thing. Now uh, now coming back to so so I have um, I'm just trying to cover uh, all the questions. Yeah. So I I just spoke about the ideal profile. I I spoke about the trending courses. Now uh, let me talk about the test requirements. So I did mention GRE a number of times, but I did not mention anything about GMAT. So when is GMAT required? So, so there are two types of tests you require when you want to do masters, GRE, which I have mentioned already, and GMAT. Now, what's the difference? 
So when you are going for a MBA courses, when you are going for a, a, a finance related courses or management related courses, then you should go for GMAT, right? So so GMAT is on eight hundred. What is a good score? Now again, that uh, varies uh, based on the university that you are targeting. A top university like Rotman or Sauder or uh, or uh, HEC Montreal would require anything around in the range of 700 to 715 or 20. Rotman Commerce, I would say 720. Southern Business School, I would say 720. Shoe Lake, HEC Montreal, Ivy Business School, at least 700, 5, 710. Then there are other MBA schools or business schools where you would require at least 680 to 700. There are universities like Brock University, which is a very good university, one of the best uh, uh, business schools in Canada right now. It's doing very well. Uh, I have got really good feedbacks about uh, Brock University. They they are uh, uh, they are fine with a score of let's say 580, 590 also in in your GMAT. So. So you should know your target school and based on your target school, you should prepare accordingly. <clears throat> uh, and then, so so the question you might be having that, can I do GRE in, in, instead of GMAT? You can do GRE, but not all the schools will accept GRE. So again, you should check the requirement if GRE can be replaced uh, uh, I mean, if GMAT can be replaced with GRE and vice versa, if GRE can be replaced with GMAT, which test I should opt for depends on your interest. If I'm an engineering student, then I would be more comfortable with GRE because GRE consists of uh, quant, 50% uh, quant and 50% English, uh, which is verbal section. In GMAT, it is it is more numerical ability. So, so uh, for anybody who who has a business background or a humanities background, for them GMAT would be better than GRE. Having said that, it's always good to explore both the tests. You can always do mock tests. You can always uh, find test materials online, and you can check for yourself which test would be better suited to you. Yeah. Now, uh, coming back to the other question, average salary. Again, uh, depending on the kind of course and the university that you graduate from, your salary would also vary, right? So, so let's say if I have done MBA from again the universities or the business schools I named just now, uh, you can expect a salary of. 140,000 uh, uh, Canadian dollars. Uh, if you are doing masters, it could be anywhere in the range of 90,000 Canadian dollars. If you are doing a diploma, it could be anywhere in the range of 40 to 55, 60,000 Canadian dollars. So, so uh, employers they do give a lot of emphasis to to your background, to the university that you are coming from to the course that you have done and how you have performed in that course and how you performed in the uh, interview. Uh, so everything matters. So there is no, uh, there is no fixed uh, rate of the salary that you are gonna be offered. So it all depends. So, but, but it can be anywhere between 40,000 to 140,000 Canadian dollars depending on the course that you have pursued and the university that you have come from. Yeah. Intakes. <clears throat> there are multiple intakes offered by the Canadian universities. So just to give you an example, like Brock University. Brock University has multiple intakes offered in the month of May, September, January. Uh, again, other universities, but but Canada is mostly a uh, fall intake uh, uh, university. So so in all the university, like out of 100 university, let's say in all these universities, you would find an intake in the month of August, September. You, you might not find an intake in January and May, 
but you will find an intake in August or September, right? So, uh, but other universities, so again, it depends on the research that you have done. You might find universities offering intakes in the month of January as well as May. So, August end intake is called fall intake, January is called uh, spring intake, and May intake is called summer intake. So, based on your research, based on your interest, you should target the intake. Uh, can students work in Canada? So, I already answered that. So, as a student, you do have a right uh, to work for 20 hours every week. So, actually, that's a right given by the government. So, the visa that you carry with you, which is called a student permit, that student permit gives you a right to work for 20 hours every week. So, you can work in the university campus. Uh, you can uh, you can work in the library, you can work in the cafeteria, you can assist your teachers. If you do really well in your TOEFL and if you do really well in your class, you can apply for the teaching assistantship. You can, uh, and if you get teaching assistantship, that's going to add a lot of value to your resume. Yeah. And if you are in a research oriented course, like if you are doing engineering or if you are doing computer science, where there is a lot of lab related activities, then you can also apply for the research assistantship, which, uh, which can actually fetch you anywhere around 20, 25,000 Canadian dollars every year. Uh, <clears throat> so you can make uh, good money from these activities. Then you can also, work full time during the vacations like summer vacation or winter vacation so you can full time and i say i mean eight hours every day which translates into 40 hours a week yeah so again i i the other question is can international students pause work in canada i already answered this uh, when i started this uh, uh webinar so yeah so there's a term called open visa. So a student's spouse can apply under that open visa thing and can apply for a full-time work and can work on a full-time basis. So while you are studying, your spouse can help you uh, by working full-time, by working 40 hours a week. How to get a post-study work visa in Canada? So there is a process, it's nothing you, once you have completed your, uh, in fact, before you complete your studies in your second year, uh, let's say you should, you should at least apply for the post-study work visa two months or three months before your course end date. So you get that buffer time, you get that extra time to apply for the visa and uh, you just have to approach the authorities, the immigration department, and you can just submit the application. They would just check few, uh, your background, your uh, the course that you have studied and everything. Once you furnish all those details, you can get the post-study work visa. Scholarships available in Canadian universities. Now, since you are an international student, it's very difficult to get a need-based scholarship because that's only limited to very few students and mainly to the domestic students, the local students. So how can I get the need-based scholarship? So for the need-based scholarship, you have to prove that you, you are financially not very stable or your family is not very stable financially and they cannot, uh, they cannot bear the cost of your education. So this can be proved through the bank statement, my my parents' earning abilities and all, and uh, and then I can apply for the need need based scholarship. But uh, let me tell you that it's very competitive, and you have to be actually a very genuine student to to get that need based scholarship. The other scholarship is a merit based. Now, as the name suggests, merit based scholarship is based on merit. So if your profile is excellent. 
uh, I mean, your academics are great. You have a great CGP of let's say 8.6, 8.7 on 10. You come from a very reputed universities or colleges, so let's say IIT or NIT or uh, PTU, VIT, then you do stand a good chance of getting scholarship. Uh, if your scores are not very high, you must have done some really great projects during your four years bachelor's. And uh, if you can get a very good recommendation letter from your professor who mentored you for the project, you can actually get uh, a very good scholarship. So merit scholarship is quite possible, but again, it's very competitive because they they have a, a limited resources and from that resources, they have to allocate the uh, scholarship to not one, but more than five or six students from across the globe. So, uh, so I have covered most of the questions which I intended to cover during this webinar. So how should I select the course in, in Canada? How, how should I decide what I want to study? So there's a lot of factors. So many students, they come, they come up to me and they, they, all, they ask me a question that, hey, I want to make good money and, and tell me which job can fetch me the maximum salary. There's nothing wrong in, in, in uh, aspiring to uh, becoming a rich uh, person, but more than that, I think it's very important that you should decide on the basis of your passion. Maybe data analytics or business analytics might fetch me the maximum salary, but am I interested in programming at all? Am I good at mathematics? So, so you have to answer such questions. Let's say I, I come from a BBA background, so I didn't study mathematics much. I can't go for data analytics because data analytics requires a lot of mathematics. It requires calculus, statistics, and I have not studied that. So if I end up in such course, I would drop out and I would have to look for other courses where I can actually survive. So it's very important that you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and based on that, you decide your course. And again, it's very important that you know your passion. I, I, I might like to be in the, uh, let's say, creative field. Then I can go for courses like architecture. I can go for courses like MR, Master of Architecture, or I can go for urban design, urban planning. I can go for design related courses like fashion design, studio design. Uh, if I'm a creative person, if I love mathematics along with a bit of uh, business, I can go into the field of financial engineering. I can go into the field of finance. Uh, I can go into the field of, uh, uh, let's say business management. So based on, again, based on your interest, passion, find out uh, your passion, identify the right course, and uh, you'll do well, right? Uh, so I think that's uh, uh, pretty everything I, I, I would have liked to cover in this webinar. Uh, and finally, the visa. The visa process is quite simple. It doesn't take much time. So you can go for the paper application or you can also go for the uh, online application. All right. So it depends on the type of application that you want to do. So paper application would require you to, uh, to submit all the hard copies. Whereas online app, through online application, you can just scan and submit all the documents. And it's very important that you apply for visa at least two months or three months before your course start date because it might take anywhere between three weeks to six weeks for your visa to come through.
Uh, with that, I would like to wish all of you best of luck. So we have provided our company's information, our number, our WhatsApp number, our uh, our company's uh, login details, everything uh, I have we have provided in the description. So you can also reach out to us and we are based in India as well. So we are based in Delhi. So you can always meet us and we would like to help you and uh, would like to provide you with the best services and uh, help you to reach the goal that you aspire for. Thank you. Best of luck to all of you once again.